Have you ever wanted to build a lovely base with your friends whilst fighting hordes of zombies? Well, that's where No One Survived comes in, a newly developed early access game by Catplay Studio that defines itself as a multiplayer co-op construction survival sandbox. The game has definitely taken inspiration from the likes of DayZ, Project Zomboid in the Forest, that's enough about that, let's jump straight into it. The game starts with you just wearing your underwear and no other clothes. It seems very much that you will have to go looting for every single item that you will possibly need. And I enjoy that. It kind of puts you in a very vulnerable position from the start that you can see zombies and that you've got no weapons or clothes. And that you know that if you don't go looting straight away, there is a very high possibility of you dying. Loot is sporadically placed within locations such as houses, warehouses and cars. The great thing about this is the loot just really makes sense. If you're looking for food, you know for a fact that you're going to have to go looking for a fridge in someone's house. If you're looking for car parts, you'd be looking around for broken down cars in the middle of the road. I really love this as it feels real world aspects. Some games just don't work that way and items that you find can be found in the most random of places that just don't make sense. If there's one thing that I'd like to change about the looting aspect, it would be the weapon spawn rate at the start of the game. Sure enough, you might find a gun, but you can guarantee there'll be no bullets with it. This happens in a lot of survival games, so it's nothing new to a lot of people. But I do think there should be a few more starter weapons within the initial location, whether it just be like an axe or a crowbar in a certain box, as it seemed that I was searching for a weapon for quite a while sometimes. I ended up just having to use my fists a lot of the time to fight off any zombies that were in the nearby location. As often in survival games like this, you don't have a story in which you get to play. The game is heavily reliant on you making your own. This is perfect for some people, but sadly if you're going to be playing solo, it probably will get a little boring after a while. I played this with a friend and we had a lot of fun together, but if he wasn't there, I think I probably would have stopped playing a little bit earlier. The game has a boot camp, which is its tutorial. This allows you to learn all the buttons and all of the different mechanics in the game as there is a lot. At the moment it introduces building, first aid and also gunplay. I really like this feature. Honestly, in a lot of survival games that I've played, there is nothing like this. It's normally trial by error. Which let me tell you, there's a lot of error a lot of time. Now as I mentioned at the start of the video, the game is still in early access. You can definitely tell that the developers really care about the game. The version that has been released is full of gameplay, and if they continue with that kind of scope, I can see it being an amazing game when it's fully released. So when I say this next bit, I say it with a pinch of salt. I don't believe the game is very well optimised for all graphics cards at the time. The Steam page shows that it recommends a 1070 graphics card. I have a 20 series, and I was still struggling on medium settings at times. It seems that if you go to reviews on the Steam page, a lot of people have said that the game is really good, except for its optimization, often lag spikes and drops in frames. Now I know that this is bound to happen and that this is just part of the teething issues with an early access game. So I really do hope that they can get these things sorted because I'd love to be able to play this game on the highest settings with the graphics that it deserves. But at this time, I just can't with the gear that I have. The building mechanics in the game have a very solid foundation. You're able to place the blueprint down of what it is that you wanted to build, and then off you go and grab the materials around it. Very similar to the forest in which you could build what you wanted to, and then go grab the logs or stones and then throw them all within the build. I love this side of building instead of having to grab all the materials of what I think I want before I get to build it. I get to see what my house will look like or my building before I've even decided to build it. It just gives me a little bit more creative freedom and makes me want to build a bigger and better house compared to building all these walls or structures or foundations just to not even use them half the time. The game features a tech tree which I honestly never expected. It works in a way as you find the materials that it tells you you will need for the item. Once you have it, you can research it. Starts with a crafting table, but then you can move on to bigger and better things all the way down to like a shower room, building bullets, building guns. I just loved the fact that this is in an early access game. I really do hope that they add more things to the tech tree. I mean, come on, who doesn't love a good tech tree when playing a game? Now on to the munch time. Get it, zombies? Okay, so the zombies sadly aren't anything to shout about. They are very much the typical kind of zombies that we've seen in games before. 
They're docile while you're not close to them, and when you do get closer, they get aggressive. We quickly found out that shooting a gun does draw them towards you, but it wasn't anything to be panicked about. It felt quite easy to take down three or four at a time, just swinging an axe manically. I kind of wish there was a little bit more aggression within them, and it did make you panic into doing things that you normally wouldn't. Now, the one time I did get hit, I contracted a disease straight away that killed me within a minute. I don't know if I was just really unlucky that I caught a disease, or if this is something that's within the game, as if you're not well prepared, you're going to die. One hit could be enough to kill you. I really like this as they're not scared to just kill you. They don't beat around the bush to the point where you can get really overpowered and just run all over the server and be invincible. I think as things stand in the game at the moment, it is a fantastic game to look at. The only thing that needs improvement is the optimization, but for the price that you're paying and for what it is that you get, considering it is early access, I think it's a steal at the moment. If you enjoy survival zombie games, then it's right up your street. Just be careful of the harder zombies on your way out.